Hey guys, welcome back to Sydney Sisters and I thought I'd just pop in here and just do a bit of disclaimer. This video actually was filmed for an assessment that I did for Year 12 actually. So um, in this assessment I had to compare organic with non-organic ingredients. But I have made gnocchi loads and I did really want to show you guys how I made it. But with a bit of a twist because this was the first time I ever made a beetroot gnocchi um, pesto. So I hope you really enjoy this video. So I thought I'd just let you know if you have been a long time viewer and I thought I sort of seem a bit different or a bit more professional sort of well probably the video quality isn't but sort of like me like so my personality has sort of changed because I did sort of film this as an assessment but I still really wanted to film it for you guys because you might enjoy it and also gain a bit of knowledge from it and yeah so I also will leave um, the recipe down below if you want to check it out and throw out the video if it sort of doesn't really make sense then you can just refer to that down below but I hope you enjoy and yeah let's get started. So for my food tech assessment today I'll be making a beetroot pesto gnocchi. So first I'll be making the gnocchi and on camera I'll be making my non-organic gnocchi and then off camera I'll be making the organic one and then at the end I'll show you the difference and what they look like or see if there is any difference between organic and non-organic ingredients. So first I'll be making the gnocchi. So first you'll be needing two cups of plain flour, you'll be needing one egg and your sweet and white potato and a handheld mixer, so like a blender, or you can just use a potato masher or a fork. But just to make it a bit quicker today, I will be using this. So with the potatoes, I have already done this off camera, but first I wash the potatoes and then I cut them into centimeter little cubes just to make it a bit quicker when it's steaming. And then first I put in the sweet potato in the steamer so then it could cook a little bit by itself before I added the sweet potato into the steamer. Then I let the potatoes cook probably for about 20 minutes to half an hour or until the knife once I put it in the potato, it was smooth and it was easy to cut into. So that makes it easier to mash so then you don't get little lumps in your gnocchi. So today, so that's very handy when you are not using a handheld blender. So when you're using a potato masher because it makes it a little bit easier. So once that was cooked, I put it into this glass bowl. We can put it into a big metal bowl and I just let it cool down a little bit and now I'll be adding all my ingredients. So now I'll be actually blending this to make it nice and smooth. So you want it like a puree-like consistency. So now once this is nice and silky and smooth, to be honest, in the past, because I have made this recipe, um, this gnocchi recipe quite a lot of times now, it probably is a bit easier to use the handheld mixer because it does take quite a while doing it by hand and it gets like a better result. So it's nice and silky and smooth and then there's hardly any luck. So definitely recommend doing that if you do try this recipe or any other gnocchi recipe. So now I'll be adding the plain flour, so you'll be needing two cups of this, and you don't really need to sift this as um, the potato is quite smooth already. And then to mix it, I'm just using a wooden spoon just to start off with, and then once it gets to a bit more of like a dough-like texture, I'll probably, I'll start using my hands. So beforehand, I have washed my hands, so they're clean and ready to use to knead this. So this is starting to form a bit of a, more of a dough-like consistency, but before that does, I will be adding my egg now. Now you just want to mix that in with your wooden spoon. So it's gotten quite sticky again, which is normal. So I will be adding another few cups of flour into this until it's more of like a dough-like consistency. So keep doing this until that happens. And this is starting to form quite nicely, but I think I will just add one more. So in total, that's been about five cups of flour. And depending how sticky your sweet potato is will depend on how much more flour you'll be needing.
So yeah, as you saw in camera, you might have been wondering why I was using this oil on my hands. It just helped the dough not stick to my hands because sometimes with flour, it definitely does work, but sometimes over time as you need sort of more um, dough gets built up on your hands. So I just did that and also too, it adds like a nice flavor to the dough. So once you, so I'll do this off camera, but once you roll out your dough into sausage like pieces, then you just want to get a knife and cut your knocky and make little knocky little pillows. So after you've cut your knockies, you want to put it on a tray and with this tray, it's just like a baking tray that I've put some cling wrap on because it actually does really work well. It doesn't stick when you put it in the freezer and they peel off really nicely. And as you go, if this does get um, filled up with knockies, you can just add another layer of cling wrap and just keep going up until you've finished using up all your dough. So yeah, just want to keep doing this until all your dough is gone and all the knockies are cut up and you can put it onto here. And after that's done, you want to put this in the freezer for about 20 minutes to half an hour until they sort of firm up a little bit because they are quite soft with the um, sweet potato. So you want to let that sort of harden up a little bit. And while that's going, you can get your water ready to boil and put the knockies in oily now so I'll just be adding some normal table salt just to make the gnocchi not stick and now I'll get the gnocchis out of the freezer. So these are the gnocchis out of the freezer, they're firm so now I'll be adding them into the water. So these are actually the organic gnocchis and they actually look quite similar to the normal gnocchis that I made which are currently in the freezer and I'll cook those after I cook this. So I'm actually using the same pot that I used for um, boiling the potatoes. So with this one, it is the organic one. So I'll be adding the gnocchi and then the organic um, paste, which is this one here. So the gnocchis are in now. And as you can see, the water is murky because of the starch from the potatoes and also from the salt. So once that's sort of closer to be getting ready, so cook the gnocchis for four minutes or until the gnocchis rise to the top of the water. And before that happens, I will be getting this mug just to dip in and get the starchy water because it helps the sauce thicken and also stick onto the gnocchis better. So as this is a homemade um, pesto so it won't really stick as well to the knockies as the store-bought one so that's why I do that so then it can stick a little bit better to it so yeah I'll let that cook and then after that cooks I'll be draining it not in that colander but a different colander and then just rinse that off with a bit of cold water just to get the salt off then I'll be putting it back in the same pot add the starchy water add a bit of the pesto because it is quite strong so I'll probably only add maybe two tablespoons of it mix it up and then it's basically ready to serve so I'll show you the final two products of the organic one which is this one and then I'll cook up the non-organic and then I'll show you what it looks like okay so now I'll be making the pesto so excuse the steam markers um, potatoes are cooking so as the potatoes are cooking you probably want to get started with your beetroot pesto so by the time that's done and you're making the gnocchi because that's pretty quick then this will be ready to go once gnocchi cooked so the greens we'll be needing is some lemon juice some salt and pepper some parmesan cheese some olive oil some milk and I actually have soy milk but if you'd like normal milk just use that and then I've got a canned sort of pickled beetroot and then I just have some basil some pine nuts but of course if you're allergic to pine nuts then don't use them and um, finally you'll be needing a garlic clove and I've already unpeeled that so that's ready to go so I've got like a hand blender so I'll just be basically putting everything into this
So I just finished making the beetroot pesto. So this is the organic, and as you can see in the different color, with using store-bought spinach, it has made it really green and sort of like a brown sort of maroon color. And then with the organic spinach, it's still a very vibrant color. So yeah, that's the difference I see so far in making this, but with the gnocchi, it's still cooking as you can hear in the back. So I'll show you the difference of what I find later. So this is the final product of my two dishes. So this is the organic one. And as you can see, it's definitely more vibrant in color and very more appealing to the eye compared to the non-organic. Cause I feel like the spinach that I used for the non-organic was maybe a bit more richer and darker. So it gave a bit of a brownie maroon color. So for me personally, I do like the organic one as um, the gnocchi turned out to a really good color and the taste was a bit better too. So in my assessment, I'll be going a bit more in depth on the differences and similarities of these two dishes.